So this is a surprise Facebook Live Will with Will's fifth quarter special. It's been a while, guys. So it's been a busy time of year already, and here I am coming into work. Just got off the train here in the beautiful city of Chicago. Look at that view. And the White Sox already hit the hot stove, and they signed not a pitcher yet, not an outfielder, not a right fielder, a catcher. Former Milwaukee Brewer and Los Angeles Dodger, Yasmani Grandal has now signed the biggest contract given to a player in White Sox history. Four years, $73 million. Just happened not even a good half hour ago. It's still shocking to White Sox fans how good of a start this is to this point. It's obviously still going to be a long offseason. we got a few months. Winter meetings haven't even started yet in December in San Diego next month. But this is the start White Sox fans needed. I mean, we're going to obviously have an episode coming out next week. I have planned now for talking a little White Sox offseason. We're going to talk a little Cubs offseason as well on top of it, too, because the Cubs are trying to lock up Javier Baez. But let's talk about Yasmin Grandal and how he would fit, is going to fit with his new team on the south side of Chicago. Obviously, we know his playoff experience and playing experience with the Los Angeles Dodgers, his previous team before he went to the Milwaukee Brewers for the last two years. It's a good move by the White Sox. We have young pitchers, Dylan Cease, Kopex coming back fully healthy from rehabbing after Tommy John surgery, Giolito, Lopez. You're figuring to bring in a starter or two as well. You got two really good catchers now at the bump at the backstop position for the White Sox, manning the catcher position. You have reigning all-star from 2019, James McCann, still in the fold this year. And you got a, not just another catcher in Grandal, but a switch hitter. Rick Khan told his team they're going to go for more left-handed bats, and they just got a really good bat. He's great at fairing pitches, so it's going to help our other pitchers even more, relievers, the young guys. This is a very big signing, and this is probably just the first of many. You know, they always say expect the unexpected. White Sox fans did not expect before Thanksgiving to see a new catcher come to our team. A really good player in Grandal, good player, did really good for the Brewers with that pitching staff. A lot of young pitchers they had over there. Uh, Corbin Burns, uh, Zach Davies is another name, and Josh Hader. He's worked with a lot of these guys. He's worked with a lot of really good pitchers when he was with the Dodgers and Kershaw and Granke when he was over there. Um, this is a really good move for the White Sox. You know, it's, it's important that they make the right moves this offseason. You know, fans could talk about, oh, let's get this player, Garrett Cole, or Nick Castellanos is a big name. But Nick Castellanos is a right-handed bat. They need more lefties, especially in right field. But I think defensively, it's going to be a very big importance. You know, they were talking about a few days ago the possibility of Jackie Bradley Jr. I would not mind that one bit. You know, if you try for Castellanos, he tried and maybe trade for Jack Peterson. It doesn't work out. Go get Jackie Bradley Jr. He's a good center fielder. You can plug Luis Robert right into right field, just like they did with Eloy in left. And the White Sox, sky's the limit this offseason, guys. You know, it's a really good start. They already have a Abreu coming back. Should be, from what I've been hearing from Chuck Garfine and some of the reporters here in Chicago, they want to lock up a Abreu to at least a three-year deal. So we're going to see how that unfolds. It's still, like I said, a long offseason, but... Grandal's a great move. Um, I think it's a really good signing for the team. Uh, like I said, I didn't know what kind of catcher we would get or what position they'd start with. That's the thing that's exciting for fans like us and uh, for me covering the show for you guys in the offseason is we're going to break down every move that happens. We're going to uh, talk about the player and how he fits with the team. So I think Rick Khan's going to have a lot of uh, tools he's giving to Rick Renteria here because we still have a guy in the fold, a young player by the name of Zach Collins. He's a catcher we got 10th overall a few years back in the draft from the University of Miami in Florida. He could DH. He could play catcher. They're going to probably put him in a lot of different spots. He's got to learn the craft. And who better to learn from not just James McCann can teach him, but also Yasmani Grandal. This is a really big move for the White Sox organization. Not just because of the player we're getting, the caliber that they're obviously trying to contend this year and the long term by making a good move like this this early in the offseason. I mean, we heard reports they were competing with the Cincinnati Reds and a few other teams for Yasmani Grandal's services. So this is a big 
aggressive move by White Sox team that White Sox fans are skeptical after last offseason. We didn't get a Manny Machado. We were in the talks for Bryce Harper and didn't close the deal. We didn't get many big free agents last year. The biggest ones we had last year were Yonder Alonso, Ivan Nova, a lot of different players the White Sox fans weren't looking for at first. You know, they were looking for the big names. So this year, we have one of the lowest payrolls in baseball guys in the south side of Chicago here. So they're going to be making a lot of moves, and we will, with course, special, going to keep it going, uh, keeping up the talk on all things Chicago White Sox, what's going on uh, with the Cubs as well, because they have a new manager in David Ross, which I will say as a White Sox fan, I haven't had a chance to do on this show yet, uh, express my uh, thoughts on the Cubs right now. Um, like I said, I've been pretty busy lately, so I apologize. This is a little uh, late overdue um this facebook live especially to catch you guys up on baseball offseason um just thought just on a side note while we're talking about the Cubs a little bit here um since we got two teams in chicago i think david ross was a great move by the cubs um really good baseball man really good character from what i've seen um he did for the cubs during their winning streak when he was on the team and uh as an analyst he knows his stuff so uh i think just think, I can think about it right now. The pitchers we have for the White Sox, and they're already in talks. We've heard a few days ago. One of now it's rumors, so anything can be said. You know, for leverage to for agents and players. So there's reports that the White Sox are one of four teams, like front runner for Zach Wheeler. Now, first I'm thinking, hey, and I'm sure you guys can agree with this. He's had two Tommy John surgeries previously, but he's pitched really well the last few years, at least at ERA under three combined the last few seasons, so that's pretty good. Um, but I see we have some viewers, so I have to comment on our viewers. Uh, my cousin Johnny Rumba, my aunt Sheila, my buddy Mitchell Barnum, and we have some Cub fans listening to White Sox talk on here. Uh, Steve Rosala from Illinois State University. Steve, I hope you're watching, man. This is a going to be the better team in uh, Chicago baseball from now on. Uh, Tommy Botkin and Larry Stassen. So I know, like I said, this was a surprise video, uh, but this is what happens in the MLB offseason. I'm going to be doing this every single time we see a surprise signing whenever I can. Doesn't matter if I'm on the road, on the go. I'm breaking every moment down of the White Sox and Cubs offseason for each of you. Uh, that's what this show is all about. And we're almost going on two years, too. Can't believe that. So next month, we'll have some exciting stuff. This month, we have some things coming up. And uh, we still have a lot of good appearances that are going to be coming up pretty soon this winter. Uh, might be the off-season, but there's no off-season for Will's fifth quarter special. We are year-round. Every single day, I have things planned for you guys to hear. Putting them together pretty soon. Uh, we're going to have Redbird Sports Update coming up pretty soon. You know, talk a little football. They're having a really good year. Basketball. Uh, especially men's and women's side. Women's team just had a good win on U of I last weekend. So we're going to talk about a lot of different things coming up. There's a lot of things I'm going to be putting out next weekend. Also wanted to say an early uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I'm gonna, we're going to have a special Thanksgiving episode coming up next week about how thankful we are for our viewers, um, of the show, uh, guest appearances, and what we're most thankful for on this show. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit, a little about my backstory and how thankful I am to have uh, the knowledge and the capability to do the show um, for the people that give me the ideas for it. So that's going to be a Thanksgiving special. Um, it's going to really, um, for people that are just new to the show a little while back, you know, just got into it, have been into it for the long haul since it started in December 2017, this one's going to really hit home. You know, it's going to, it's going to tell you guys what the show means to me, what it means for you guys to be a part of the Will's Fifth Quarter Special Family. So Yosemite Grandal joining the Chicago White Sox four years. $73 million, the biggest signing in White Sox history. And I got a message here for Rick Conley. Good start, Rick, after getting Jose Brady back on the team. Keep it up. White Sox fans are backing you. But after last offseason, the way that went, we need these moves to be true and factual this offseason for this team. We have a bright future, and we need to show that we are in it to those free agents. We might get a Garrett Cole. We might. We'll find out. It's going to be very exciting. But as I always say on the show, expect the unexpected, guys. When the fourth quarter buzzer sounds, turn to us for your fifth quarter sports talk. I'm your host, Will Farlow, the host and creator of Will's Fifth Quarter Special, saying so long. Enjoy your Thursday afternoon. Thanks for tuning into this Facebook Live, and uh, be tuned into some of the episodes coming up next week. All right, guys, take it easy.